brilliant, yes I am, is a website I'm going to use to try and help myself understand neural networks a little bit better. But why do you need to understand neural networks as an educational scientist? Because information processing and predictive processing... What? How we think about stuff. Oh! ...is used in models of explaining a Bayesian approach to modelling learning. Learning from past experience. Oh! My research and understanding in learning comes from ecological psychology, pedagogy, and other similar related fields. What? The learning environment and how we can change it to help us learn or help other people learn. Okay. But neural networks is more machine learning and AI and deep learning. But, but how are they different? Let me get there which doesn't use as much information as humans because humans have more information, more processing, more ability to use past experience and new information to come to a conclusion or action or decision, whatever that happens to be. That seems a little vague of an explanation. Yeah, deliberately, so I can get on with the course. Okay then. So we're going to try and find, where are we going? I'm gonna be completely lost. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna to be totally like out of my depth. No idea what's going on, so let's see. Speeding through the unnecessary bits, I like it. That's a purple one, is that reducing? Talking to yourself. Yeah, so that reduces all of that, and then... You are gonna sound mad. Right, okay, so that's a negative, cool. <laughs> I'm pushing the buttons already, I'm pushing the buttons already. Um, okay, that's nice. If you want to make Chester happy, where shouldn't you rub him? He is. So four inputs changing the output. Yeah, you know, I'm not going mad. Ears is bad. We got it right. All good, I mean, look at that. Artificial network. Positive and negative inputs. Good, good. Right. Pushing all the buttons without reading things. Yep, yeah, makes total sense. The colours are obviously different, so that one's positive, that's negative. Mumbling the question to yourself multiple times. Really helpful. Can you find a combination of inputs that fully activates? Ah, so can the output be full using different combinations of the inputs? Not from what I can see. Yes, he seems rather grouchy today. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I thought so. So nothing worked. What is the effect of the pink connection on the neuron? Pink was negative. It decreases activation. Correct, yeah. The difference in colour helps you positive and negative. Cool, okay, I figured that out on the last one. Continue. How many different combinations of rubs does the neuron predict that Lester will be completely indifferent to? What? Sorry, say that again. Notice that when none of the inputs to the neuron are on, the neuron is half filled. Lester is completely indifferent, neither happy nor irritated, but you can also be indifferent when you're rubbing him. Right, so more pushing buttons to make sure you get the answer right, for sure without making silly mistakes. Four. Five? Why? Oh, the basic one, the one like in the middle. Because it's four on top of, that's one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I missed the last one, okay, fine. Makes sense. So you made a silly mistake by not being able to count to five. Here's another and that makes rub-related predictions but reflects just as more complex rub-related preference. More confused faces that explain exactly what's going on, more reading of the question, and more confused faces. Oh, one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's got four neurons and six inputs. So I guess that's a level one neuron and a level two neuron? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, there are just three neurons in the middle layer, middle layer of the network. At the top, just its neuron display, it's a predicted response. Okay. Does the just neuron at the top of responding to flipping on the inputs? Yes, of course it does. Hold up, you said that as if you know what you're talking about. You certainly don't. Which neuron in the middle layer should be most active if you want to make just a purr? The one on the left, because that's green. And that green means positive, which is the output that you want. Correct, yes, because that's green and those two are purple but red, so they're negative. Oh look, we got day five, yay. Um, of course, you can't do 10 minutes worth of work without some sort of distraction. Okay, the center and right neurons in the middle layer make negative connections to the gesture neuron to fully activate the gesture neuron. Do you think these two neurons should be activated or less less activated? Yes, that, that's obvious. Less negatives is more positive. 
So thinking about the green lines as a 1 and purple lines as a negative 1, more purple lines means more negative. Yes. Sorted. Continue. How many different input combinations will fully activate the jester neuron? Confusion. Will fully talk to yourself and more pushing buttons. I wouldn't say any of those. Denial of the question, lots more pushing of buttons until he realises it was full to start with. Ah, no, so that's one. That's two. That's three. And just to make sure, more pushing of buttons. That one has to be on. And then one, two, three. Yeah, three. Submit. We got it right. What do you think an Anne with 25 neurons in LA can do? Let's take a look. 25, okay, I'm not going to be counting all of those. <laughs> I, love how, I love how it's turned to handwritten. Okay, no buttons, but I will find a way to make it fun. <laughs> That's not a two. That's a two. That's a three. That's a... That's a four. That's a four. Okay, so that's obviously... That's still a four. Yup. Making shapes without reading any of the words. Uh, that's interesting. That's gone to nine. Okay. Instead of a handful of inputs, 400 pixels. Now you decide to read the words and get confused. Uh, can you find any digi that Anne can't recognise very well? <laughs> it's funny how the question tells you to do exactly what you were doing before you even read the question. <laughs> I've got the three. Uh, we'll go with two. Sometimes it makes mistakes for twos, threes, fives, or eights. All of these numbers have curvy and straight sections. But it makes mistakes on fours. I, d I don't agree. Sorry, I, I disagree with you, brilliant. <laughs> That's a four, but you've given it a six. And instead of accepting you're wrong, you go and prove to yourself that there are some exceptions where you could be right. Yeah, in fact, okay. Training is a process of configuring a neural network to perform a specialized task. Interesting. Learn tasks, learn to match boxes. Next lesson. Meow. Continue. Start lesson. Computer vision. What do you see in this picture? A car on a driveway. Um, human vision. Context matters. Yes, it does. Uh, to start, here's a small region of a photograph that we've blown up 1% of pixels using nothing but your biological visual system. Do your best to identify what is in the snippet of the photograph. A book, a plant. Well, it could be any of them. It could literally be any of them. I'm going to go with a plant. Not even close. It is at this point you get frustrated with being wrong. So I don't think it's any of those, but I don't get a choice. <laughs> Irritation. Here's the full picture. A bridge. Dissatisfaction. Whee. Of course, a way to make things fun. Uh, can you find a part of the photo that corresponds to the snippet? That corresponds to the snippet? Yes, repeating the question to yourself with attitude will help you figure it out. No, show me. <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. Releasing frustrations. Optical illusions. Continue, continue, continue. Here's an example. There are two grey circles separated by some distance. Uh, which one is shaded darker? See, that looks shaded darker, but the fact that it said optical illusion and that it's being compared with a lighter colour, I'm going to say that they're the same. There's no fooling you, is there? Ha <laughs> um, ha But they, they do, this one does look darker, it's just anticipating the, the... Yeah. What a great explanation of anticipating the answer rather than giving the answer that you see. If you stare long enough, what colour appears in the empty spot on the ring? Play. I am staring at the plus. Green. I'm getting green. I don't know about you people, but I'm getting green. Pale green. That's what we see too. Nice. But why green? And go ahead and try and change the colour. Don't pay attention to the perception of the changes. Right, so 
when I'm staring at the cross, that's light green. If I go to blue and I stare at the cross, I am staring at the cross with more intent. Literally just an empty space, I don't see a colour difference. Not as much intent this time. Okay, I see pink there, that's weird. Now feeling awkward staring at a cross on a screen for a YouTube video. Yeah, no colour difference there either. Okay. Interesting, the blue and the yellow, I didn't see a colour difference. I'm not colour blind, by the way. Um, this example showcases the disappearing effect image processing. Okay, image processing effect. I'm going to note that down. Next, pixels. Pixels, we know what pixels are. Intelligence. Zero and one, okay. By examining the sample of pixels in the image, can you tell what pixel value represents white? One. One because this is, this is higher and it's lighter up there. Right, yes. You can make a change to the Apple or its environment, like changing the light level in the room, the grid is different. Which of the two options shown here could result from a change in the light level of the room? Oh, it's getting, it's getting brighter. Everything is getting brighter here, whereas here it's just had... Well, that's also had some changes. I'm going to guess B, because it's brighter. Correct. Is, is that the, the thinking? Yes. Same pattern, just brighter. Highlights an important principle. Changing the brightness of an image changes the pixel values, but does not change the underlying object. Yes, makes sense. So the, the spread, so this changes the object, whereas this just changes all of them. That makes sense. Uh, this centered image of the apple and red hair... Careful, you almost said a whole sentence, you just missed a couple of words. Pixel arithmetic. Cool. Look at the image of a checkerboard. How would you identify the positions of the checkers? The answer is simple, you look for circles, I was going to say. So we use past experience to help us. I'm actually going to have to start reading these now. Oops. Okay, to make a vertical filter, what should you replace a pixel in the old image with? The absolute value of the difference in pixel intensity between itself and... Wake up. Okay, the absolute value of the difference in pixel intensity between itself and its right-hand neighbour, the average pixel intensity of it and its right-hand neighbour, the product of the pixel intensities of it and its right-hand neighbour. It has to... Why does it have to be related to its right-hand neighbour? Confused. Repeated question. Confused. Denial. I'm sure he'll get there at some point. Okay, so it's comparing this one with this one, and is it the absolute values? Is it the average? So would it be the average of them in the middle? Would it be the absolute? Or would it be the product of pixel intensities of it and its right neighbour? I would imagine... My thinking is the absolute value. And by absolute, you mean total of each pixel compared. Correct. Let's go. And for those of you that want to read through the full explanation, feel free to pause the video now. That's what I thought. That that was that was my thinking. Um, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have thought of it in a math sense, but okay, cool. Right. There is nothing special about vertical boundaries. You can just as easily make a horizontal filtering algorithm to detect horizontal. Now, if you want to detect horizontal edges with neighboring pixels value, should you subtract from each pixel? What? I can't answer it because I don't understand the question. If you want to detect horizontal edges, what neighboring pixel value should you subtract from each pixel? What neighboring? Oh, so top or bottom, right? Uh, above and below, yeah, they are the answers. Um, so just for reference, I didn't look at the answers because I wanted to try and understand the question before I looked at the answers and then it confirmed the question. Either the pixel above or below, submit. Correct, yes. Understand the question, can get the answer. 
Review and reflect. Nice. Um, there's not really much to review and reflect, really, but lesson done. This is a long course. I mean, I've done the first two lessons. We've got another two there. We've got all of, how many have we got here? We've got six in neurons, seven in neurons, and then we have the four layers, and then we have artificial neural networks. Artificial neural networks. I'm assuming there's going to be something after that one as well. Look at that, learning in the brain, ooh. Perceptions, interoception, this is where we want to be. Computational biology. Blah, blah, blah. It's going to be a fun one. If you want me to share more of my learning journey on this course, let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to take the course yourself, you can follow the link in the description that actually takes you to the brilliant website that is an affiliate link, just as like an FYI. But until then, I will see you on YouTube. Awkward waving.